the Tran Cat Night special guest uh, video interview right here on the TranCatNight.org website. Folks, today is July the 22nd, 2021. I hope you all are having a very wonderful and blessed day, as always. We continue to keep the programming moving along here at Tran Cat Night. And uh, listen, it's been a very prolific day uh, outside of my own premium podcast this morning. We had Ivan Thranholm on this morning, John Rubino from the dollarcollapse.com uh, website. We also had Ken Partika, one of the top uh, preppers on uh, this morning from Pinball Preparedness. And we're finishing up strong today uh, with Mr. Uh, Tim uh, Flanders, Timothy Flanders, who's the author of City of God versus the City of Man, The Battles of the Church from Antiquity to Present which is forthcoming an introduction to the Holy Bible for traditional Catholics. His writings have appeared at 1 Peter 5 in Crisis, as well as in Catholic uh, Family News. In 2019, he founded The Meaning of Catholic, a lay apostolate dedicated to uniting Catholics against the enemies of the church. He holds a degree in classical languages from Grand Valley State University. He has done graduate work uh, with the Catholic University of Ukraine. He lives in the Midwest with his four uh, with his four children and his wife. So uh, kudos uh, to Tim. And uh, Tim, listen, uh, it's good to get you on the program. And uh, as I mentioned, we've got a lot of uh, common friends uh, that seem to do your show, my show. And uh, talk to us um, about getting this apostolate started. What was uh, sort of uh, the fire uh, beneath your breast behind that? Sure, man. Uh, well, thanks for having me on, Eric. It's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. Thanks for all your good work. Um, and the, what, it's what I talk about in my book, which is the crusading spirit, the crusading spirit, as we know, animated the crusaders. But I argue in my book, which is, which is really a, a, it's designed to be a one volume church history for the common lay reader, especially doubles as a, as a great high school homeschool textbook, just a, like a, a history textbook. And I argue that the crusading spirit is primarily a spiritual battle between the principalities and powers on the one hand and Christ and his church on the other. And so it, it's spiritual, but it's also temporal. So it covers the temporal sword itself uh, in, in the actual crusading and of killing other people literally, but it's also spiritual in overcoming the demons in the world, the flesh and the devil. And the crusading spirit has animated the church from the very beginning. Because mm -hmm. the crusading spirit is the cross. That's what crusade means. It's taking up the cross. And so it's it's allowing the cross to animate a militant struggle against the enemies of Holy Church. And the apostolate itself, the, the mission of the apostolate, comes from the petition in the Litany of the Saints, which is that thou wouldst humble the enemies of Holy Church. And that's the petition in the Litany of the Saints. And so the the idea for the apostolate is is the the idea of uniting Catholics against the enemies of the Holy Church in that crusading spirit, because this is what is the only thing that's going to bring us out of everything we're dealing with is a new crusading spirit, a new crusading movement, which truly penetrates the true spirit of the Crusades in its most pure form. Because there's many there's been many other Crusades in history. That have have been polluted, that have been not not uh, had the true pure spirit of of maybe you, you see in the first crusade especially, but you see in 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 other in some of the other Eastern crusades you see more pollution of earthly cares and and earthly ambitions and really that in, really polluted the crusading spirit from the beginning. So that's what I see today is is that Catholic especially Catholic men have lost the true crusading spirit and they've been they've kind of fallen into a lot of uh, a very earthly minded uh, crusade where they're they're kind of just concerned about complaining towards this person or that person and not working in their interior life or 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 dealing with the world the flesh and the devil you know so the the idea of the apostolate is to really try to awaken the crusading spirit once more to Unite Catholics against the enemies of the Holy Church. So it's 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 mainly actually directed towards other Catholics uh, to to get us all directed towards the right enemies, I guess. So that's that's the long and short of it. And I, I talk more about the history in my forthcoming book. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Great opening uh, statement there. Now, most people don't realize this, but I'm working on a book, too, as well, uh, entitled Fortress of the Soul, Ascension to the King's Throne Room. And it's. Um, it's all about the interior life. And I know a lot of people who know me from the outside, they, 
you know, they'll say, oh, he's just constantly talking about, uh, you know, stuff that really doesn't matter in the end. And, and to some degree, maybe that's right. It's, you know, secondary uh, in nature, with, you know, with prophecies and some of the stuff that's happening in the world or whatnot. Uh, but the underlying um, premise to this apostolate is that we fly by the motto of keep your eagle's wings spread in faith and hope faith over fear for the, for the times ahead. We know there's a great storm on the horizon and we, we'd like to think that we're doing our part here at Track at Night as Eagles to help uh, keep people in the proper perspective and to help people transition through this time. But in an hour, uh, Timothy, where as I've had so many other wonderful guests on, I've been podcasting now for seven years. I've had the, the luxury of interviewing probably over a thousand people um, and, you know, a good number of them being, uh, you know, Catholics. Uh it's hard. It's hard to kind of talk to some people when they don't realize perhaps that they are an enemy of the church. And I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be nice here, but listen, uh, there obviously is is something wrong in the church, right? And I've had one particular guest, such as Bernard Jansen, I was a close friend of uh, Father Malachi Martin, who does my show uh, quite frequently, and he identified it as a camouflaged apostasy, where you now have people literally shifted over to something brand new, yet it's still being labeled Catholic. And they can't understand and process how what they're doing is wrong because most people who identify as Catholics are moving in that direction, if, if that makes sense. So I wanted to throw it back to you in regards to how, how you kind of approach this thing. And you, you, of course, have to take it on an individual basis. You want to smash anyone over their heads in an opening conversation or whatnot. But at the same time, you, you know, you have to be pretty forthright. As a matter of fact, on my, my show this morning, I actually had to throw one of my guests off, Ibn Thranholm. Um, who just he, she didn't get it. And she actually started calling me Protestant and all this stuff. So I had to actually school her what the, actually, you know, the church teaches in regards to uh, modernism and false obedience and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, how, how have you kind of approached it with your your apostle? I mean, it's, it's, it can get kind of dicey, but at the same time, you got to be pretty forthright with people. Yeah, it's that's always the balance, and and there's an objective component to that, and it also and also a subjective component, uh, because yeah, I mean, obviously want to tell the truth, but you also want to be tell it in a way that will win over this particular soul. Uh, so as um, Saint Francis de Sales talks about honey catching more flies, uh, and Saint Francis actually in Saint Francis of Assisi's first rule, he actually talks about when you're among the heathen. There's two different approaches. You can either, and and he's especially talking about the Mohammedans. So he's, you know, his Franciscans are going off to Morocco, or whatever, getting martyrs. And he's like saying, he's saying, okay, we we can take two approaches. One, you can go in there and just start preaching the gospel and then get beheaded. That and that's a that's a glorious way to go. And he he's he's saying, go for it, you know. And many <laughs> Franciscans did. So you can go ahead and and go and just preach the gospel, be as Fort Worth as possible, and get beheaded and take the glory of the martyrdom. And then on the other hand, you can also just sort of be not 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 at all suppressing the gospel, but just not being as uh, immediately forthright as as you may you could. So just, you know, starting and just making contacts and trying to win over souls a little, with a, much, a little bit more gentle approach. And it, it really just depends on the context and your own individual uh, disposition. Um, you know, some some saints do take that approach and they have great glory for, uh, you know, just going out and preaching the gospel in the most forthright possibly forthright possible way and getting beheaded or whatever it may be or, or mm -hmm. suffering or whatever. And there's others who are winning over souls in a different way. But as long as the same goal is in mind, which is conversion and baptism, and we're not just you know, we're not we're not just going off and and lacking forthrightness because we want to be nice to people or we're you know scared of the truth or any of those reasons. Because there is actually a precedent for a certain you know winning over someone as much as you can with a certain amount of gentleness and charity. Um, but the problem nowadays there's way too much of that, and it's and it's really false charity. It's false gentleness. It's not even real because you know people are just afraid of the truth. That's the reason they're not talking. Uh, right talking about that but you raised the the very important problem which is the the meaning of catholic and that's the name of the apostolate and the reason the name is that is because the meaning of catholic has been diluted so if you are catholic if you call yourself catholic you even identify as catholic you may be a pure modernist agnostic apostate you know bound for hell uh now not to say that many other catholic who are actually faithful catholics might not end up in hell we might but the I mean, they, they need to have a serious uh, lobotomy to try to get their right. brain in the right spot because um, 
Father Ripperger mentioned, like, if, if you just grow up in the world today, you become a modernist just by osmosis. You, you right. need to do a ton of intellectual formation and just destroy your TV from infancy. Just never watch TV and never, you know, read magazines. I mean, it's so difficult to not be a modernist in this world today. Uh, so you need to actually do a ton of work to actually not be a modernist growing up. So it's and with the church as it is, it's easy for Catholics to just become modernists by proxy, by osmosis. Um, I mean, it, this is the situation we're in. But but the dilution mm -hmm. of the term Catholic, uh, that that's the hard part.